Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Hello, everyone. I'm talking today with a superstar out of the UK and a very, an anomaly. And I want to investigate that because you have a, a highly motivated entrepreneurial person in the UK. And I didn't think there were any of those left. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, hello, Tom Hunt. Hey, Larry, it's a pleasure to be on a show that I've actually been listening to for a while now, not just because we produce it. Yeah, and thanks for the great job. Everybody needs to know the uh, the professionalism that has been put, you know, we, we that have upgraded, I guess, is a good way over the last uh, six, seven, eight months is in no small uh, way due to your influence. and. You guys have just been a pleasure to work with. So thank you uh, very much. You know, I'm very particular about the kind of guests and I drive your people nuts about getting uh, high quality guests, but I, I always want them to know that uh, I'm really happy with the work you do. So, and that comes from you, you know, you, you make it happen. So thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. And I think maybe some of the stuff we talk about today may come back to that, what you're saying then. But let's see where we go. Well, let's see where we go. And what I thought, uh, first of all, you know, you're the founder and CEO of Fame. It's Fame is the the company that uh, does these things. I don't know what all Fame does. What all does Fame do? So we do one thing, which is start and grow podcasts typically, or business podcasts, typically for B2B brands, sometimes just for businesses. And so what that actually means is that businesses or B2B businesses will pay us each month and we'll help find the guests, as you mentioned, hopefully getting the guests right. Um, we then produce the audio, video, written image assets, and then we also promote the shows. So we do that in exchange for getting paid every month. Yeah, and, and it's made my life a whole lot easier in doing these because I used to take notes. You know, we did it in our office mm. and our staff. None of us were trained. And uh, uh, I would take, you know, I would start off with someone. I had this idea that I did not want the episodes to be long. Mm. And uh, so I would start. Plus, I don't like things to be planned. They're better if they're spontaneous. And so once we started talking, uh, we get into a group and I start to get an idea of what could be the theme for uh, at least that episode. And uh, I'd be writing bullet points down mm. while I was thinking of the next questions. And it was very taxing. <laughs> and plus the staff couldn't read my notes. So uh, I'm worse than a doctor in terms of. Yeah, I, I actually remember because when we started working together, there was a few episodes that you'd done the notes for. And yeah. I was like, because I think I was handling you guys at the start. I was like, we'll take that on. So I got the <laughs> screenshots of notes and I was like, wow, this is going to be tricky. But we managed it. Um, but then the improvement was that now you don't take notes. And then we right. pick out the things and then write that into the descriptions, et cetera. Um, well, well, as you're a podcaster, you know, the thing is that you're in, you know, you're at Tension needs to be on who you're talking to because a lot of times they'll say things in passing that has, you know, uh, you know, decades of experience and efforts to get to where they made that statement, you know, and they'll just toss it off. But if you're not listening, uh, and you never catch them all, but uh, a lot of times just because you can, you know, you're paying attention, you can catch those things and say, let's let's talk about that for a minute, and then. And then it unfolds. Uh, uh, you get some incredible content you wouldn't get if you're busy, you know, writing bullet points down. You know, so exactly. So thank you for that. Now, I am, you know, when I looked at this thing, so that's what fame is. And how long has fame been in business? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. And why did you take on this uh, uh, 
responsibility, this this idea, mainly, you know, was it an outgrowth of you doing your own podcast or did that come later? So I, at the time of starting Fame, I was the head of marketing at a B2B software company. Uh-huh. We started a podcast. I was the host. In like long story short, it was very profitable for their business. So A, we were building relationships with guests that became customers. And then B, we got the timing right on the topic. And so we were able to like get in, in there as it was growing. And so our company became relatively famous in, the, in that world of sales. And then, so that's why it was very profitable for the business. So then I left, they became the first client of fame. And then all fame is, is just us taking that process we were building in house and then implementing it and proving it over three and a half years to now we have roughly 70 clients. Okay. That's, uh, that's mushroomed dramatically. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit because podcast is not, <laughs> it, it, it we're not going to be running out of ideas for people to have podcasts and, uh, you know, people of insight with things to share that people want to hear. So uh, the sky's the limit on how far you can go. And you do have, I just, you know, you have other businesses you have, you know, we'll get into like Vcast and uh, I'm really, really interested in your AI tool for uh, coming up with, you know, the, the notes and things like that, but uh, probably to do this correctly, so people can relate to you. Uh, where where did all of this uh, initiative and uh, drive and uh, curiosity about this kind of work come from? You know, you know, like what led you to where you're doing a B two B podcast? You know, with this other company, and you're the you're the guy who you know we need a podcast and. It, you know, it turns out you're the guy who did it. So these things don't happen by accident. Yeah, so we have to rewind maybe 10 years. So you know how some like entrepreneurs have the story that they're like seven years old and they're going around like selling newspapers or whatever because they're like a born entrepreneur. That, that was wasn't, me. Yeah, that was yeah me exactly right. And so, what, what, yeah. what were you doing when you were seven to, for your first business, Larry? Was it something like selling sweets or TV? something? Selling TV guides. Sick. How old? <laughs> uh, really eight years old. Was, I saw an ad in a TV guide. I sent off at eight years old. I sent off for the information and I set up my own route. I had 50 uh, houses in the neighborhood and I would get 15 cents cash money from them every week. I'd send 11 cents in an envelope to the uh, TV guide company. And I would keep four cents. I would make $2 wow. a week. <laughs> wow that's crazy isn't it i mean <laughs> the, point, the point here is that i got to age 22 and i had never done anything entrepreneurial and so instead of being like driven to wanting to sell things or doing entrepreneurial stuff i was driven away from the other option which is being employed ah so, so i do a, a master's degree four-year study in chemistry realize i don't really like i don't want to be stuck in a lab on my own for the rest of my life so then I, I then essentially go and spend four years in management consulting, which part of it I liked, but I really, it just wasn't like for me. Like I didn't feel I was like, is this it to life? Do I do this for 30 years and then retire? So then I was like, if I can't be employed, what else am I going to do? I'm also really like the internet. So you then have two options. You either learn how to code or you learn how to sell things online. Ah. So if we really have to summarize the last 10 years, because I've really been in the entrepreneur world for around 10 years now, is I've just been learning how to sell things through the internet. Ah, And okay. so in the seven years between realizing this and spending all of my time doing it and getting the job as the head of marketing at that software company we were discussing, there's probably about 15 different things I tried and we could probably say failed at. Like what? Like what? The, my favorite one, I was a male leggings business. So you know how <laughs> now you see people running like in, in yeah, leggings? Right. This was before yeah. then, 2012. Yeah. So we go on and we'll link to this below. We have the dragon. We run on Dragon Stand, which is Shark Tank um, oh. in the US. And so we, we created a male leggings brand, started selling them on the internet, and then started selling a few, got on Dragon's Den, 
then sold quite a lot, didn't get investment, um, and then eventually shut the business down because we weren't selling that many. <laughs> you, see so, a lot of, you see a lot of those legging and T-shirt type companies uh, show up in um, these news feeds and everything, and then they, you know, with a lot of advertisement, then they disappear. So I guess that happens to a lot of people in that clothing business. Yeah, exactly. Like we weren't really super passionate about making amazing leggings. It was always yeah. like if me and my two best friends, it was like a side project. So we weren't like fully into it. Yeah. Um, and so there's this wasteland of failed online businesses. And so I'm like 30, roughly 30 years old, maybe 29. And I like just have all this, these bits of time. He didn't really have any cash coming in. So I'm like, I'll go and work at this company that my friend runs as head of marketing. Because I, uh, I know how to sell stuff, right? Right. And so that's where that's the that we get to the, the head of how'd marketing. How'd you learn how to sell how'd you learn how to sell stuff? Yeah. So when I say selling things online, my distinction between sales and marketing is marketing is you're just selling one to many, sales is one to one. And right. I would actually say that prior to starting fame, I did my sales skills one to one, which I know you're an expert at, Larry. Right. Well, I don't think we're that good at all. Um, but my marketing skills, so selling one to many, I think did get quite good because all I was trying to do was sell one to many using ads or using sales pages. So eventually copywriting. And so how did I get good at that? I did a shitload of courses. And then I also just did a lot of practice. Like my whole life, like those seven years, I didn't really do anything else. Like I was just, my, all I was doing was working on these businesses. Well, the great thing about the online thing and doing the sales letters and things like that is the feedback tells you you know, uh, what works and what didn't work. <laughs> and, Straight away, uh, very fast, and, yeah. And so, but much of business, much of life works the same way if people will pay attention, you know, to what's happening. You know, it's like, you know, it's like being a comedian, you know, a comedian work years to get a good solid 45 minute set that they can kill with, you know. And uh, they do that by feedback. You know, they get an idea and then they get on stage. You know, they won't sit and study for hours. Uh, they get an idea and they get on stage. You know, there's so much of this works out. I don't want to get sidetracked, but you know that thing that uh, they did with the Beatles at the Abbey Road uh, session where mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in the second one about halfway through George Harrison comes in. And this was when he was in a good mood, which didn't seem to be that often since they treated him like crap most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he came in and uh, he was playing uh, something in the way, you know, va -da -boo -va, you know, and he said, uh, Paul, he said, what do you, he said, what should I, what should come after that? He said, you know, and he, you know, I've been stuck on this for, th for three months trying to figure out this that, and the other. And, uh, you know, Paul mum mumbles some stuff off, but then Lennon said something that just kind of, I'm sure, went over everybody's head. He said, well, just say, he said, sing it again and see what comes out of your mouth and said, keep singing it and keep s seeing what different things come out of your mouth until something comes out that you like, you know? <laughs> and he said, you know, you, you get there by doing it. You know, you give your subconscious a chance to work rather than uh, focus on, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do. Well, do it anyway and let your subconscious come up. And he came up with these beautiful lines, one of the greatest songs of all times, because I think because John Lennon told him, just keep singing it and see what comes out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great analogy to, to what I was doing for seven years. Just, yeah. just keep trying and see what comes out. We could help a lot of people right now, Tom, by putting some light on the subject of people say, you know, follow your passion, uh, you know, write down what you're, you know, excited, you know, and I believe follow your curiosity, follow the things that attract your attention and things you get, because if you, you find something to do that you like, you get excited about, it's easier to, to put the discipline in uh, because you enjoy your, you get better and better at it. You get enjoyment from doing it, but also you'll make the extra effort, you know, cause that's where extraordinary success comes from is extra intense effort over long periods of time. And so you got to like it a little bit, but this whole idea, you know, you'll have people come in and say, you've been told follow your passion and that's the worst advice you could ever get. 
because, you know, you can overdo that advice to where, you know, like I like to uh, polish oyster shells. You know, I just love the color. I want to spend my life. Yeah, great. Uh, not a big market on that, you know. And so mm -hmm. uh, Mark Cuban all along has said, uh, you know, refine that by saying, find something you can get passionate at that you can make money at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you can get excited about, you can fall in love with, and you can make a lot of money at, you know, develop a skill. And so that's really what you were kind of trying to trying to do or in the process of doing. Would you say that? And what would your how would you uh how would you uh describe that process about finding something? Because you're obviously passionate about what you're doing now. So talk I think you could help a lot of people by uh some comments on following your passion or finding your passion. Yeah, so well, uh, just as you're saying that, I think one thing to, to do before we get to that point um, is that if you're trying to make something work, e.g. you're trying to make a business work or you're trying to make money, then the one thing that matters is you make something that is better than the competitors, better than other right. people. That, that's the first thing. And so in order to get to that point, you have to put in a lot of effort. And so that can be driven by passion for the thing, or it can just be driven by the fact that you want to make a lot of money or you want to build a business, right? Right. So it can be either or, or a combination of those two things. Yeah. And so I think for me, I was fortunate that when I was trying, I was driven by making money, when I was trying to do that, I actually did start to love and enjoy the process of influencing one-to-many, e.g. marketing. Right. And so... But I, I didn't know I had that. So I was starting to, I was like, and as I was getting good, I was like, yeah, I'm actually starting to enjoy this. So then I, I got driven and still am driven by the two things. A, like building a business that works and making money. And then B, the enjoyment of the process of influencing people one to many. And so at Fame, we obviously do that to our potential customers, but then we help our clients do that for, for them. And so I think I'm driven by both, but you don't have to be, you don't, I don't think you have to be passionate. I don't think you have to really want to make a load of money because you can just combine them or, or have either. Thanks for listening to the Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whiteallonwinning.com. Thanks for listening.